The, the ethereal quality of, of uh, life as well as the, uh, uh, the wonderment and the power of this, how we just become humans or how anything is created. It comes from this nebulous, almost cosmic force. And then we are put on this planet and we are either animal or, um, or bird or reptile or human but we go through the same process of being born. and It's just an amazing process. These three pieces are, represent uh, three conscious choices of, of action, if you will. The almost the pensive look, the, the quality of, of reflection of what just happened. The first piece right here on the, on the far left uh, represents the, the, the dutiful one, the, the action, the, the, the immediate, um, the call to action, and what happens uh, when you are called to action, what can happen. Usually in a hero's journey or in a hero's life, he lose something and he happens to lose his leg and his two arms. And the last piece is the um, Reflection, not only the reflection, but the um, the residue of of your action, of what happened, um, the decay of, of of a dream, the decay of what you thought was right. Uh, the ideals are are beyond you, and the reality is that people die because of war. The sculpture is called The First and the Last, and um, it was conceived by uh, me reading the book Zealot, and um, the idea was to, my idea was to portray Christ in a, in a, in a uh, more rep, uh, humanistic notion, and by doing so, I, I left off his hands, and I took out his head, because if I were Pontius Pilate, I would have taken away his powerpoints. And if he were the king of the Jews and he was going to revolt against the Roman Empire, I in turn would make sure that those that were following this leader, the king of the Jews, that they would not do the same thing and revolt against the Roman Empire. So I took off the head, which is his speaking voice, and took off his hands because that, those were healing hands. And I had him still on the cross, revealed and decaying, instead of at the cave in which um, the story tells in the Bible. I did that for the purpose of humanizing him again and making him the object of our humanism as well. I had him displayed at a church in Los Olivos called St. Mark's. We put it up on top of the church so it had the feeling of ascension. From that ascension I, and the resurrection, uh, he was, I wanted to have the feeling that, again, that, that he was human, but he was going to see his father. But, in, but going back to these pieces, the reason I love working this way in particular, is, as well as the rebar, I love to show the internal structures of my sculptures, the internal turmoil of those structures. And um, it's not important to me to show the the outside, because I show the outside as well as the inside, the internal turmoil as well as the external trouble. Uh, Giacometti once said that he does not do uh, sculpture without an existential value to it. I, I tend to agree with that quote. I can't do a sculpture without some redeemable existential quality to it. And for me, these are um, existential. Uh, they, they require you to be involved, not just um, to be sat out in a, in a park and to look at and say, wow, these are beautiful sculptures. They also require you to have a dialogue with yourself. And that dialogue um, could take a multitude, multitude of uh, emotions, 
and I'm, um, uh, I want that to happen. I want that to occur. Uh, they are uh, 48 inches in length, um, in height, I should say, 48 inches in height, and they, uh, they are significant and they are powerful. And I think that they d deserve the attention of a museum, they deserve the attention of a private collector, and they deserve the attention of a, of a fine gallery.